Hello! Showing here, I'm a carpenter based in Japan. Today I'm building a new bench for my house because the old one is falling apart. I didn't build this one. I bought it at the home center 30 years ago, but now it looks shabby. The bench will reach up to there. It's about 3 meters. I'm building a long bench. I've wanted to make a new bench for a long time, but I put it off because it's for our house. It took me two years to build a shelf for the closet when I built this house. I was often asked, when will you finish building the shelf? I didn't build this bench for that reason. I made a chopping board stand a long time ago. A large piece of timber was cut with a circular saw with some offcuts. I'm using these offcuts today. Since the wood is cut vertically, also timber is a straight grain. It will be a bench with a straight grain. This type of bench is called an endai in Japan, and three types of wood are used. Since slats, wide deck boards for decks, and squared sats. This time, I use squared sats. I plane all the wood using a super surfacer. I had an earful about the old bench for decades, so I'm making a new one so that I can be a bit bossy from today. The support beam measures 3 meters long and 45 millimeters by 60 millimeters. It's a plain wood used for joists and rafters. The legs are 45 millimeter square timber. The slats are 38 millimeters by 46 millimeters. It's so detailed, but I'm using those timbers. About the slats, you can use them longitudinally or short, whichever you want. There are no set rules. I'm using it this time in a short direction to expose the wider edge with the straight grain on top. For this bench, I use a through mortise and tenon joint. The tenon passes entirely through the support beam that is wedged from the tenon side. It's a simple, traditional way. Most fittings were joined this way in the old days. Currently, joints are more elegant and there is less chance of passing through tenons. Passing through the beam and wedging it will secure it firmly. It's been a while since I used this bench top drill press. I really missed it, and I was about to cry. In the old days, we used bevel siding for an entrance and lean to for houses in the countryside. It's called yoroibari in Japanese, which is used as decoration. Bevel siding used a similar wall frame structure as fittings. I cut the tenon using a tenoning machine and drilled a small hole using this drill press. There were dozens of holes to drill.
I use the largest tenoning machine for framers. Its size might surprise cabinet makers or joiners. This machine can cut up to 360mm high and long tenons. I cut the tenon to 9mm this time. A large machine can cut a small tenon, but a small machine can't cut a large tenon. I only have this huge tenon machine, so I'm using it. I thought the outer side of the concrete slab was soaked, but maybe it's been sunk for a long time. It was almost horizontal, so I cut six legs to the same length. It's no problem, even if the concrete is sloped about 6mm to 8mm and the bench slopes. Our house's eaves are long, so the bench won't get wet in the rain. I make it horizontal. I cut the tenons end slightly where the wedges go. The wedges will be on both sides. With a rough hand saw, I cut it diagonally so that it is about to reach the root of the tenon. With room on both sides, the mortise is cut wide. After being washed, the tenon end will be wider and won't come out. It works that way and will be secured well. Now I join them. I won't use my favorite glue this time. I just drive in wedges on the tenon. That's enough to secure it. This is unrelated to this video, but I've been thinking about something lately. Our videos are being viewed thanks to you. However, we realized on our Japanese channel that over 80% of viewers are not subscribers. Sometimes I discuss with my son which will come sooner, my retirement or 1 million subscribers on the Japanese channel. This English channel has 90% of views from non-subscribers. I know this is a lot to ask, but I would appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel if you enjoy it. I might sound a little forced right, but I would be delighted if this channel could reach 100k subscribers in the near future. While we have posted many videos, actually, this is the first time I have asked for subscriptions. 
except for the caption at the end, asking for out shamelessly. I will probably retire from carpentry before we reach our goals. However, we would like to challenge that. I would appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel if you like it. <laughs> now the frame is complete. It has turned out sturdy and doesn't rattle at all. Now I cut the slats. Deck boards are used on wood decks and slats are used on benches. The bottom parts can be called sills, support beams, frames, or lugs. However, I'm unsure of the official terms for this one piece of slat for Japanese benches called endai. I'm calling it a piece of wood that will be stepped on. Usually, I nail the slat from the top, but this time, I screw the slat from the bottom since support rail so the nails won't be visible. Then, I will secure that support rail to the legs. I think it will be an elegant design. I arrange the slats. After I have cut all the slats to lengths, I align them. It may seem easy, but it isn't. As a ruler, I place a straight piece of wood on the front, then decide on the bottom and top of the slats. It holds them with the straight piece of wood from both sides to prevent shifting. After the slats are clamped, they remain aligned even when the spacing is adjusted. Unless you have a machine for assembling, I think this is the most efficient method. Since the bottom support rail that I'm screwing are thin, I countersink the holes using a Phillips head screwdriver bit. It prevents wood from cracking. First, I only secure one screw for each slat. It's difficult to make the corner right angled after two screws are tightened. I make sure the corner is at a right angle, then secure the second screw. Now the two slat sets are completed. After setting it on the legs, I screw it from the bottom up. From the top, screw store nails won't be visible.
Finally, I check his hands so that the small length difference will be unnoticeable. <laughs> I apply oil to finish it. I've been oiling a lot lately, so I feel the finish is improving. The latest oils are easy to apply, even with waist cloths. Now the 30 year old bench has been replaced with this brand new one. It's nice to have a new one. But it doesn't suit this house very well. It seems out of place. But it's beautiful. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.